Hey, this is Jamie Hood from Round Two Corp headquarters. Man, thanks for joining us. First things first, how's my audio? Let me know in the comments. Uh, if I'm too loud, too quiet, let me know. We've got some exciting stuff to show you today. We've got our marketing manager extraordinaire, Chad Reed, helping me out. He knows the ins and outs of all this YouTube stuff. I'm just here for the ride. Uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks for, for coming early. I saw people in the chat uh, here hanging out, just waiting for us to get here. Thanks for hanging in there. We had a few difficulties we worked through. Hopefully the rest of this goes off without a hitch. I just got a few things I want to show you today. Unfortunately, when we do these things, we don't do them often enough. And I think the expectations maybe get a little bit high when we do them. And everybody wants to see everything we've got in the works. And let me tell you, we've got more in the works than just the few things we're going to show you today. Uh, I'm going to hit on some of the things we touched on at Wonderfest back in June. Uh, we we're going to talk about a couple of car kits that we've got in development and a new big rig development. So uh, without further ado, Chad, I'll have you switch over to the other cam and we will show you one of the first car kits we're going to talk about today. So we are bringing back the Californian. Chad, do you know anything about the Californian? I do not know about this one. <laughs> Me either. But hey, I've been told it's cool. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the, uh, I believe it was a, an, an MPC kit. Sorry for stuttering. It's an MPC kit uh, that uh, uh, John and Chuck, are, a couple of our other uh, model kit guys, have been working on. So you can see how Chuck's been working through some of the decals already on that. Uh, this is one of the first test shots we've gotten. So those guys will be rolling on the box art on that pretty soon. One of the other... Uh, car kits we've had in the works and you may have already guessed it based on one of our earlier uh releases uh last winter we brought out the uh chevy 2 station wagon pay no attention to the man behind the curtain uh but now of course we brought back the uh the trailer the extra motor uh all the goodies you expect to come in a an amt repop i mean this Look, I'm not a car guy, but this gets cool with all the just the extra little doodads and and uh, parts that come in it. Let me see if I can stop the the spinning wheel there from it. Um, extra gas cans, all the various and sundry parts to build the, the motor several ways. Uh, I really have to appreciate the effort that goes into reproducing box art like this. They've done a super cool job on it. It's going to come with a matte finish on the packaging. And in my opinion, it looks awesome. I see a, a comment that we've got some buffering. Um, all right, we'll try and keep an eye on that. One of the other cool car kits that we've been working on is um, with a lack of Ghostbusters licensing right now. No, sorry. Uh, we've taken a look at what else we can do with our Cadillac wagon tooling. So we created a few uh, ambulance parts to go with it. And we're going we're gonna to re release a full-blown ambulance version later on. But for now, we're going to release it as the Surf Shark, where it's got this cool uh, rat-rotted look. It comes with a surfboard, two surfboards, and a surfboard rack. Surf Shark-style decals. Uh, I think this is just a, a really cool take maybe an unusual take on, on the, you know, the Cadillac ambulance tooling that we had. So this is the, the cool packaging. One of our newest uh, members of round two has been working on the packaging for that. And she did a great job. And uh, here's a look at the build up.
Let's hit that go button. Pew. So normally I invite a guest along to kind of chat with about these things, but uh, I don't know, things have been uh, hectic. Let's just say that. All right. So yeah, our our uh, our build up guy Mike Weary, I think did a great job in the build up for us, putting all the little rust spots on there, the super cool look. So uh, you know, when we uh, I look at us releasing molecules as man, we're giving you raw materials in a box, and you guys take it uh, you know to the next level with your own imagination, your own special tricks. <clears throat> you do to, to come up with, you know, whether it be weathering or, you know, pinstriping and, and, and different takes on it. And uh, we, we just, we put the raw materials out there and let you guys take your models to the next level. There's one guy asking, is the AMT or the polar legs tooling? This is the AMT tooling. So this is a glue kit. All right. Flash the camera back to me. Okay. All right. So, like I said, we've got more in the works as far as car kits. We are starting two brand new model kit car model car kits uh, based on current like off the showroom floor models today. So we've got those in the works to come out hopefully next year. We've got another big uh, TV and movie car that I'm not going to say what it is, but if you look at all the TV and movie cars that, kits that are out there and there's one big one that's missing, that's the one we're working on. Um, along with all the other uh, kits that we'll have that follow our usual pattern of taking an old kit, making it at least as good as it was when you grew up with it, and hopefully making it a little better, adding new parts, making improvements here and there where we can. So the next kit I'm going to show is a project that I've been working on for over a year. Uh, we started this, this project before COVID hit. And when COVID did hit, it really kind of hooked an anchor to the project. So it slowed it down drastically. We'd hope to get it out sooner. But this is a big rig kit. And uh, I'm really excited to show it to you. Uh, so just give me just a minute. Okay, so when we show you this, some people are going to think, oh, it's the obvious choice. Uh, this is a kit that AMT has had in planning stages for a long time. And we'll let Chad roll the camera over and we'll show you our new take on the C900 Ford with a Garwood trash compactor back end. So most guys that have been around a while know that back in the 70s, AMT had planned on doing a Garwood trash compactor, a trash truck, a refuse truck. And the patterns for that exist today. And we found the gentleman that owns them, that had them in his possession, and we couldn't come to an agreement with him. And we decided that we were going to go through the lengths of making it even better than what those original wooden patterns were. So we teamed up with uh, a great CAD artist uh, in uh, Washington, Charles Adams, who helped me out on the, the Klingon Katinga kit and several other Star Wars kit or Star Trek kits. And uh, he basically built this thing inside and out from reference and measurements that he could find online. This thing has moving parts, uh, this, the, the pistons and everything on the side, everything works. The, the, there's a big giant sled in, whoops, in, inside the compactor that pushes all of the garbage out the back end. It, it will slide, it will move. The back end will lift up the 
compactor that kind of scoops the trash up into the storage compartment. Uh, you can move it. It's, it's uh, articulated. And I would show you all that if it were not for this being uh, a mock-up and it's, it's pretty fragile and it's holding together basically by magic and willpower at this point. So I, I will take a couple things off. You'll notice on the one side, we've got a panel and it's missing from the other side. This side will get a panel. There are all kinds of little fine details that are not on the mock-up right now. Uh, handles, uh, triggers, things like that, that uh, in real life would operate the machine. Um, obviously the, the machine won't, won't move automatically. You'll, you'll be able to move the parts around as you wish though. But I can take this off, hopefully, there you go. Take that off, hopefully. Ah. Give you a better look inside. And if I'm lucky, I'll even be able to take the top off. There we go. So you can see, I mean, the, this broke down the way Charles came, you know, created this. It, we ended up with tons of parts. We do, did have to do some editing uh, of some of the the parts that made it uh, like too too tooling heavy. I'll, I'll put it that way. Uh, this the kit will come with uh, with tubing, things like that, cables, and all that kind of stuff to be able to run all the hydraulic fluid uh, that would be needed in a, a truck like this. And I will attempt to move the camera a little bit and hopefully it doesn't fall off the table just so you get a better look down on the inside of it. Not sure how good I'm going to be able to get it, but and I can probably move the. So again, this, this does use our existing uh, C600, C6900. Uh, Ford semi chassis. Uh, we had to build um, new frame rails for it. Uh, other uh, details that uh, truck enthusiasts might note, uh, we created a new D-shaped uh, gas tank. You can see it there right now as it's coming by. So it's got a new gas tank on it and it's got new bud wheels on it, which I understand were a, a big missing component in the uh, the, the semi the big rig modeling segment so like i said all the stuff in here will move we'll compact we'll lift the the garbage up the sled uh is in metal the sled will be connected with a with a pump with this telescoping chrome set of piping that will be included in the kit so obviously you can lubricate it for better movement, but there you go. We're, like I said, super excited to be able to show this one. Finally, been working on it for a long, long time. And I think uh, the results are gonna be great. It's, it's in the tooling stages right now. So we'll be looking for this probably right after the first of the year. All right, let me switch the camera back. So next, you can show some of the stuff I'm really into. And I know the crowd that comes to these things, they know if I'm going to be here, they're going to see sci-fi stuff. So let's dive into that. I'll start with a couple of things that we showed at Wonderfest. At Wonderfest, we showed mock-ups for two brand new kits, and we've gotten the first test shots back of those kits. So I'm going to show those to you now. We'll have to reset the camera a little bit, probably. All right, let's go ahead and switch it, and we'll get this all lined up. Hey, look at that. That's great. So th this is our 148 scale Hawk from Space 1999. Kit and measures about 15 inches long. We'll scoot that back a little bit more. the camera a little bit more 
um, the factory inadvertently put it on too large of a base. This is on our seven inch dome base and we'll be adjusting that down to the five inch dome base. The seven inch dome base, I think just kind of is too big for the kid. It overpowers it a little bit. So don't let that distract you. So again, this is just a test shot. Um, I think I got all the, all the parts are on there. Uh, we have, you know, a few fit issues, things to, to work through as far as that goes, some, some seams that are showing up too much. All that stuff gets, gets resolved uh, in the, the, the test shot revision stage, and that's kind of where we're in now. So next, bring out the USS Grissom from Star Trek. This is another kit that we showed at, at Wonderfest back in June. So this is the first test shot, and you can see I've got um, some patterns laid on it for the uh, the decals for on the, the side that will be coming, wrapping around here pretty soon. Things are just taped together uh, on this test shot just so I can take it apart and access it, things like that. We do plan on offering a light kit for this this uh, kit at, at some point. It's not going to be uh, simultaneous with the kit release. Uh, hopefully, we can get it uh, taken care of and out real early in 2022. This kit was originally uh, planned to be a late 2021 kit. Chances are it probably will slip into 2022 due to a lot of the uh, shipping uh shortages that, that we've got. Uh, shipping out of, out of China right now worldwide is a, it's a big nightmare. So we're, we're a victim of it as much as everyone else. Nobody, nobody else but me is in the chat. And uh, that is Jim Small. He's our build-up guy. And so he is working on the build-up for both this and the Hawk as we speak. So Jim's been cobbling together a light kit uh, to go in the, the model he's building right now. All right, so let's do this one this way. All right, you can switch the camera back to me. So I'm real excited to show you what we got next. Um, I wish we could have shown this to you at Wonderfest. It just wasn't ready. This is going to be the reveal of our Razor Crest model kit from uh, Star Wars The Mandalorian. Super excited to show it to you. This is the mock-up that is in the, the tooling stage. This mock-up has been approved. So what you see is pretty much what you're going to get as far as the way the kit is going to turn out. It's in a few parts right now, so I'm going to show you some of the parts first and see if we can get that to work, and then I'll kind of put things together and put it out on the turntable. So just to, to give you an idea of the scale, this is a 70-second scale kit, which is a, a fairly common uh, uh, aircraft scale. So this comes with figures of both Mandalorian and Grogu, and they're tiny, especially Grogu. I'm so afraid I'm going to drop him on the floor and never get him again, see him again. But uh, he's about the size of a half a piece of rice. And he's flesh colored, so it's going to be real, super hard to see. But... Here he is, the star of our show. That's, it, it's tough to make out. I mean, even under, look, I need glasses. I, I can't see him with the naked eye. The ears are there, trust me. There's the armless Mando. 
course, the camera will not have the ability to focus on him. So we'll show some close-up photos a bit later on, probably on our Facebook page, and maybe I'll post some to the blog again. Here's the cockpit. If I, maybe if I cover my eyes, it will focus on the kit part instead of my face. Oh, not quite. Uh, he can, it's almost going to focus, but uh, I'm not going to belabor the fact, but you can see whether you can make out all the details. They are there and they are accurate. How do I know they're accurate? Because I drew up the plans for the cockpit and it took me forever. We've got Grogu's little cradle on the, the jump chair. And Mandel's pilot seat. So. I'm not going to bust out like all the uh, all the uh, the landing gear and that kind of thing, but you'll get the point. So that's one of the nice owls. Tons and tons of intricate panel detail on it. And of course, get to size comparison. It's almost the size of a can of Coke or your favorite carbonated beverage. So then we have the main body. Uh, it will come with an open cargo hold and open or closed, either one, and uh, the main entry. And again, it's just got every stinking detail on there. I want to thank our 13, 315 live viewers tuning in for this. We really do appreciate you spending your time. So there we go. So I'll uh, attach the nacelles. Hopefully it goes without any disasters. put this on the turntable and see if we can get some better looks at it. There we go. Seeing as how we had the forethought to primer this. The details are coming through okay. The camera will have a little bit of trouble focusing because it's moving, so we'll take a couple stops along the way.
Walter Bosley, if you are talking about a Schwinn Stingray, look for that from MPC. So here's where I say I've been working on this so closely for a long time that I don't know what to say about it. So I'll just <laughs> let the video speak for itself. Take a little pause here. One guy was asking if there will be a plug for the stand at the bottom. Yes, there will. Um, we'll have a, a panel that covers that little hole there, or it is engineered to go on our 7-inch uh, dome display base. See how close we can get. Focus action, there we go. Look in, up inside the engines there. All right, focus. Come on. Focus for me. Come on. There's not a surface on this that doesn't have some kind of detail on it. Of course, that's where the, the guns will plug in. Mm -hmm. Focus, come on. There we go. There it is. Uh, trying to remember how long it is. Um, I want to say it's, it's 14 or 15 inches long, something like that. And I'll see if I can maybe unpack one of those weapons real quick and show. That's the side-mounted blaster that goes on each side of the ship. Let's see if that's easy enough to plug in there. There we go. That's cool. It's cool, man. It's cool. generated from CAD data supplied from the studio. So every detail is kind of the best we could make it in injected plastic. So there we go. All right, we'll flip it back. So 
So thanks again for joining us, guys. I wanted to keep this kind of short and sweet, show just a few things we've got going. Like I said, we've got tons of stuff behind the scenes. Uh, when we get to the point where we've got mock-ups to show of these new items, uh, we'll do another video like this, maybe in a few months. So again, thanks for visiting. Thanks for taking the time to, to join me for this little show today. Uh, really appreciate it. We really appreciate you guys and the way that you back us up. You go out and buy, buy our product. Thanks for that. We're, we're making a product that we like and that we know you like. So that said, thanks for coming. We'll see you again next time.